my name is Gary uh, from eFuture. E I'm an ELT consultant here. And uh, today I'm going to be discussing strategies and tips to enhance reading literacy. So it's uh, nice to, to uh, be doing the seminar for you and hopefully you can get some good tips and uh, things that you can take to your classroom from me. So I hope everything is okay where you are and uh, let's get started. Okay, so, so kind of my agenda for today, what I'm going to be going over. Uh, so I'm going to first briefly talk about what is reading, um, discuss the challenges that EFL students have for reading, uh, go over um, the big five of reading instruction, as well as some teaching methods and talk about graded readers and give you some reading activities that you can uh, do in your class. Okay, so I'm going to be asking some questions to you guys. So please don't be shy in the chat. Uh, I'd like to interact with you guys and um, really kind of, you know, interact and not just have this uh, one way. So don't be too shy. So I'm going to ask you some questions. So first, what do you guys think? What is reading? So do you have any idea? What is reading? Any ideas? What do you think reading is? So I have the chat open, so feel free to answer if you have any idea. What is reading? Getting information, enjoying a book. Okay. So some good some good answers. So in the academic sense, let's see, enjoying a book to get other story, a kind of ability. Okay, some good answers. Okay, so let me tell you. So reading is making meaning from text. So those were some examples of reading, uh, which you guys wrote in the chat. So to normal words, way to practice what you've learned. Yeah, some good, good ones. So reading is making meaning from text. So that includes things like identifying the words in print. So like you, like some people wrote in chat, uh, reading a book is a type of reading, something that you do. Constructing understanding from them. So this is where the comprehension comes in. And coordinating and identifying words, uh, making meaning so that reading is automatic and accurate. So this is the fluency. Okay, so these are things that are all incorporated into reading. Right? So next question. Uh, so kind of think about your students here. Do your students like reading English books? And if you have any idea of why or why not, please uh, see if you can write anything in, in chat here. So do you enjoy reading English books? you or your students. So I know when I was a teacher, so I taught in Korea for about six years, it was kind of difficult for my students to read in English. So I know there, there's a lot of challenges that they have to overcome. So is there anything that uh, your students like? So your students, oh, your students enjoy? Yeah, you personally enjoy? Kind of. <laughs> yeah, so maybe some, not all, okay. Yeah, because it's interesting. All right, that's good. That's actually good to hear uh, that your students enjoy reading English. Okay, so some questions for you now. As a teacher, what are some challenges you have when you, te when you teach reading? Oh, you try to help your kids enjoy it, yeah? Depends on how difficult. Yeah, so sometimes your the uh, books that you have might be a bit more difficult for your students, so difficulty. Okay. All right, so some, some other things like, so what what are some challenges for your students? What do you think um, that they have to overcome to, to read? The tone, yeah, trying to get the right tone, kind of inflection, definitely comes into play. Yeah, so I'll show you some of my examples. <clears throat> of some challenges that I thought think that students have. The fluency is another one. So kind of these are some challenges that I think students have, uh, definitely. So definitely reading and phonics skills, um, the background knowledge, and critical thinking can also play. Uh, new words, so vocabulary. 
And then sentence structures, kind of grammar, and not knowing the knowledge of sight words. Yeah, so yeah, seeing a lot of this kind of the same answers in chat as well. So these are some things that I thought of that uh, the students have challenges for when they're trying to learn to read. Okay, so let's go into the big five. Okay, so these are the big five of reading literacy. So where do we start? So first, the students would start with phonemic awareness. So it's the first, uh, first thing. And then we'd move on to phonics, vocabulary, fluency, and comprehension. So these are kind of the five things that we need to focus on to kind of help with the challenges that the students are having. So the previous challenges that I showed, if we kind of focus a little bit on each of these steps, we can more help our students. Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit more uh, on what these actually mean, and then kind of go into the teaching methods of how can we um, utilize these in the classroom, okay? So starting with phonemic awareness. So phonemic awareness is the ability to identify and manipulate individual sounds in spoken words. So this is kind of what, what the students uh, obtain before they can actually read. So this is where the students are just um, kind of listening to English. This comes from the exposure to English. Okay? So even just by you know the teacher reading a story to the students, the students will be more aware of uh, the different sounds that the English language has. So with learning any kind of language, um, if, if say we're trying to learn a completely new language, like for me, learning Mandarin, um, I would have to kind of get, um, get a little bit more familiar with the, the sounds and intonations of the language before I could even you know, try to start to learn. So once I have that basic knowledge, and then we bring in the next step, the phonics, then the students already know the sounds, and now we represent the symbols. We represent what the alphabet, the letters of the language. So say the teacher read them a story, and they hear this sound, and then once they are presented with, okay, the letter S represents this sound as then they can kind of bridge the gap and kind of build that foundation. So phonics and phonemic awareness kind of builds the foundation that the students need to be able to read later on. Yeah. So these are kind of very important steps that the students need to take before moving further on to the next, uh, next steps of the big five. All right, so that's the phonics. So phonics is the relationship between the sounds and symbols. Okay. And then when we go to step three, we have vocabulary. So we're taking all these sounds now that the students learn, all the phonics, and then putting them together, and they're making words. So now it's trying to understand what the words mean, and this kind of builds the foundation for comprehension. So you can think of phonemic awareness is the foundation a bit for phonics, and then phonics builds up to vocabulary. So each of these steps kind of build up to the final step of comprehension. So vocabulary, you kind of get the, the words of the text. So once we have all this, then we move on to fluency. And fluency is just the ability to read the text, okay, kind of accurately and quickly. But uh, I would say for the early learners, for fluency, it's more important to put the emphasis on just practice. Okay? You don't want to make them feel like they need to be perfect too early on, and just just get the focus more on using the language. It would be more important uh, for fluency, at least in the beginning, in my opinion. Okay? So the fluency is just getting the practice, practicing using the language. And that leads to the final, comprehension. So comprehension is the ultimate goal of reading. So you, you're giving the students texts, they're able to read it, but then also be able to understand it. So they can understand what's going on and in the story and kind of leads to more enjoyment. Okay. So this is uh, the comprehension. All right. Am I going too fast? Uh, please let me know in chat if I'm speaking too quickly or not. Uh, I know I can sometimes speak a little fast. So please let me know in chat if you need me to slow down a bit. So 
feel free. I won't take any offense or anything. Okay. All right. So now we learned the big five. So we already know the big five now. So how can we teach it? How can we bring these teaching methods into the class? So first, I'm going to go over the kind of steps that I talked about, kind of building, uh, building the foundation up, starting from the beginning. So of course, we want to start with the phonic skills and sight words. Okay, so we're going to start here. And then when we reach the vocabulary part for reading, it's very important to pre-teach vocabulary to the students. And I'll go a little more in-depth in a little bit about that concept. And then using visual aids to motivate the students. So again, I'll go more deeply into these points in a few. And then providing background knowledge after we show the visual aids. Then being able to teach the reading skills and teach students to understand meaning from context. So these last two points are, so if we wanted to apply the big five of reading, um, this, the first bullet point would be the phonics and phonemic awareness. And then obviously vocabulary would be the vocabulary, the third step. Providing background knowledge and reading skills can kind of go in where the fluency is. And then teaching reading skills and uh, understand meaning can go in the comprehension as well. So kind of a breakdown of which, which one of these points hits which uh, big five, okay? So let's go more in depth of these. So starting with the first two, phonemic awareness and phonics. So we're starting with the phonic skills and sight words. So like I talked about earlier, phonemic awareness, you would, the students would kind of get that passively. You wouldn't really set aside a part of your lesson, like, okay, today we're going to focus on phonemic awareness. You, you wouldn't really do that in a class. Phonemic awareness happens passively, just as long as the students are exposed to English through you reading the stories or listening to a video or audio, that can satisfy the phonemic awareness part. And then for phonics, kind of building the phonics skills, you can, of course, get the phonics books, the phonics skill books, and start building up from there. So it's very important for reading to build the phonics and make sure that it's solid moving into the next steps. Okay? So if you wanted to do a, incorporate a little bit of reading along with phonics, there are also books and stories that are tailored to phonics. So here's an example called Dan and the Ram. And it's focused on the A, okay? the A sound the phonics for the phonics target. So you would be able to use this phonics book along, or this phonics story along with the phonics book if you wanted to kind of um, have the students practice a little bit of reading at the same time. And this also helps them build their, um, their sight word um, knowledge as well. So having the stories like this, and as you can see, the A is in red, so that is that signifies the target for the students to practice. So this kind of bridges the gap a little bit to, uh, to fluency and vocabulary at the same time with these phonics readers. Okay. So like I talked about with the sight words, you can see in the red box, we do give a list of the sight words. So it lets them know these are the words that um, you wouldn't spend time to define to the students. So these are the words that they can just read them and not have to really think about what the meaning is. Okay. So these are the, yeah, the sight words. Okay. So then also including audio and visual aids for the phonemic words and phonics. So with the words that they see in the story, it's good to have a picture, like with the stories. So when they're reading the story, they can read the words and vocabulary, but also see a representation of what it would look like in, in real life or in, uh, yeah, in, in context of the story. So using the animations and audio as well can help visualize um, the text for the students. Because a lot of times um, there are different kinds of learners. So that's kind of a different topic, but there are learners that learn 
better through visual aids and audio. So it's kind of helping those students that learn in that sort of way, kind of optimally. Okay. All right. So now we're into vocabulary. So I talked about pre-teaching vocabulary and then practicing vocabulary through activities. Um, so how to teach sight words to kids three to five. Um, you'd kind of just go over it with them, with the sight words. It's not something that you have to really set as much time to the side for. There's, a, there's no real definitions to, to these words, really, like uh, a and at. They're very, they're very kind of short words, so early on they can kind of, you know, you can just present it to them as sight words early on and kind of explain to them a little bit. So now going into vocabulary. So I'm going to talk about the concept of pre-teaching key vocabulary and the importance of it and practicing the key vocabulary. So why pre-teaching vocabulary is important is because um, we want the students to be able to understand the text that we're, um, that we're presenting to them. So instead of the order of giving the students the book first or giving the text first and then having them read it and then having to teach the vocabulary while they're reading isn't really isn't really optimal it doesn't it doesn't have a good class flow to it because if you pre-teach the vocabulary in the beginning <clears throat> by the time they get into the text there won't be any breaks in between reading so they'll be able to go through the text read their sentence and not have to stop and think oh what does this word mean so if we pre-teach the vocabulary to them it it doesn't interrupt the kind of practice for them yeah so we can do that <clears throat> excuse me so we can do that again through illustrations animations and videos so like in the books we do have you know words to know let them know um, kind of looking at what uh, words that you need to look out for in the story and another kind of teaching tip i can say um, while you lesson plan for your reading lessons or your reading activities kind of scan through the text because sometimes books will give you will give you the vocabulary to look out for but of course as a teacher you know what you know the level of your students so it's best that you look through the text and then kind of pinpoint, okay, maybe maybe my students might not know what this word means. So you would kind of add that to the list of vocabulary that you would want to tell your students before you get into reading the text. Yeah. So using those kinds of tips. And then this kind of question comes up a lot. Is it okay to use L1 in, in class for vocabulary? That should be in class, okay? So, uh, in Korea, I think for L1 is their native language if for, for that terminology. So in, in China, like using Chinese for vocabulary or in your English class, is it effective? Is it not? Um, this question kind of comes up a lot for teachers. Yeah, so L1, L1 is the native language of the students. Okay? L1 is native language. So for, for Chinese students, that is Chinese or Mandarin or yeah so in Korea it's Korean Korean language so that L1 is the native language and then L2 would be this the language that they're learning so in this case it would be English okay so is it okay to use L1 for vocabulary for the younger learners I believe that it is kind of optimal to use it helps them a bit because there are some there's some schools of thought that thinks that um, you should use English to explain the vocabulary, which can be effective for older students, kind of exposing them more and kind of building the vocabulary. But for the very young learners or like early English learners, it is more optimal to, I believe, bridge that gap a little bit easier through L1, through their native language. So kind of how I used to do it in when I taught as a teacher, 
So kind of here. So we have this image here. So in chat, can you guess what English word am I presenting here? What vocabulary word am I presenting here? What is this? Any guesses? Okay, so I see a shopping. Yeah. Shopaholic, okay, maybe, yeah. Supermarket, yeah, we have some good guesses. Unhappy, okay. Snacks, okay. Getting by, chips. <laughs> yeah, we have some great guesses, good, I like it. So this one is shopping, good. So the very first person had the right answer, shopping. Okay, so shopping would be here. And then if you wanted to use the L1, you kind of put the Chinese, the Mandarin or the Korean word there to kind of bridge what the meaning is for the student. Okay, so let's do another one. So this is shopping. How about this one? So I'll give you a hint, it's not SpongeBob. SpongeBob is not the vocabulary word. Very good. There's some busy housework, cleaning. Good. The answer is clean. Okay, so we're giving a clean. Okay. And then you can get, kind of give the word. Okay. And now make a little last one here. This one's a little bit more difficult. Let me see if any of the uh, chat can get this first one. Get this correct. See a lot of hits. Okay. Hitting. Baseball. Let me see if a strike. Good. We have some good uh, baseball baseball words. Play baseball. Sports. How about a hint? So what is he doing? So he's playing baseball, but what is he doing with baseball? Hint. Exercise. Good. So this one is a little bit more difficult, and I, I kind of expected it as well. That's why I put this last. So this one is practice. So he's practicing baseball. So a little bit more difficult. So this one was practice. And then again, you would show the vocabulary word. Okay. So you can kind of present it like this. So I would present um, usually for like in a course book or a lesson <clears throat> at the beginning of the unit, I would present the vocabulary to them like this. Uh, sometimes, you know, they would have a worksheet or they can write down the words and the meaning. And then once we get to the portion of the, the unit that uses the words, they have something to reference if they don't remember the meaning of the word. Okay. So those are the kind of tips for vocabulary. Okay. All right. So showing pictures without any explanation. So would that just be showing the picture? So example here, if I just did this, is this what you mean? And then have the students guess, or? What would be the, uh, yeah. So you can, yeah, you can show the picture and then kind of have the students guess what the vocabulary word is. And then you can tell them what the vocabulary word is afterwards, after guessing if that's what you uh, meant. Yeah, yeah, it depends on the student's level and all that. Okay. Different. Yeah, so there can be, yeah, different people have different explanations. So it's all up to the teacher, essentially, how you want to do it. I'm just, so the, what I'm presenting to you is kind of not like the, uh, it's just how one way to do it. So each teacher will have their own style. So kind of what I'm trying to do is kind of giving you ideas that you can adapt to your classroom for the most part. Okay? So if you feel like this is too hard for your students, then there's a way for you to change it for your students because you know their level the best. Okay? All right, so let's move into fluency. So practicing the language and then remember 
the students don't need to be perfect. Okay. So these are some strategies to practice reading fluency. So remember, this is just them practicing. So there's shared reading. So shared reading is um, the students all reading the same text, but then taking turns. So they can kind of take turns reading. So when I was uh, younger in uh, elementary school, we had this kind of way of uh, reading called popcorn reading. So the students would, we would all have our book and the students would start reading. The teacher would say popcorn and then the student would choose another student and then they would start reading from where they left off. So it's kind of just a, a way to practice reading. Okay, choral reading is kind of the kind of the listen and repeat. Okay, so the teacher is reading the story to the students, and then the students can kind of repeat after. Paired reading, um, as it's titled, is kind of the putting the students in pairs and having them take turns reading together. So one student will go first for say you know three or four sentences, and then the students will will pass. Okay. Reader's theater, so this is the role play. So giving the students some roles, giving them kind of a script to follow, and they can um, practice reading this way. Mm -hmm. Timed reading, uh, so giving the students a certain amount of time and then see how much they can read. I'll give you an example of um, an activity that is a timed reading activity. And repeated reading. So just kind of reading the same text, kind of repetition over and over. So you can take each of these kinds of strategies and kind of put them into games and activities as well. So not just having the bare basic, uh, for example, like the paired reading, you can do different kinds of uh, games and stuff that you can make for a paired reading strategy. So these are all just strategies that you can kind of alter into a game, okay? And then the last one, the comprehension. So how much of the text does the student understand? So for comprehension, we talked about uh, teaching the reading skills. Of course, um, these are all going to be adopted depending on the student levels. So don't think that this list that I have here, your first graders have to do them. You don't, you don't need to like uh, feel pressured to, OK, my students need to learn how to scan for information. So kind of simple things, um, <clears throat> just like for the very basic intro or like English learners, just something simple as asking the students questions about the text or comparing two, two sentences or two vocabulary words to kind of see how they're understanding. So if we take this text here, um, asking the students, okay, um, first, you'd kind of go over what countries the, the, the characters are in, kind of do a walkthrough of the, the page. And then after reading it, ask them, you know, how is the weather in America? And then they should be able to kind of look at the page or remember how the weather is in America for uh, James. Okay, so kind of simple. Asking questions is the very simple way of uh, kind of getting the comprehension to see if the students understand. All right, <clears throat> so now I'm going to kind of go into graded readers. Um, before I go into graded readers, do, was there any questions in chat about the, the big five? Uh, anything that I wasn't too clear, clear with? Um, please feel free to, to ask me at this point before I move on to graded readers and how we can uh, kind of adapt the big five into graded readers and what graded readers are as well. Okay. Thank you for the flowers. <laughs> All right, so let's go into graded readers and the reading process. Okay. So it's very important to know that, to remember that the level of difficulty will affect the, the student's ability to learn. Uh, yes, we'll make this PPT available later as well. Okay. So the level of difficulty, of course, will affect the student's ability to learn. When it comes to reading, there has been studies that 
um, for the words on the page, the vocabulary, if the students can't understand or know 95 to 98% of what they're reading on the page, they won't be able to really learn. Okay, So the, you want to be able to have a little bit of challenge, but not too much. Okay, Not too much. So this is where kind of graded readers comes in. So what graded readers are, so we're taking different stories. So we'll take the story, but then kind of adapt it. So we're adapting the story to make it a bit more, to make it easier for certain levels of students. So this example here, we have Alice in Wonderland. So a story, like a very old story. And then as you can see, we've kind of adapted it, adapted it to kind of lower levels, okay? So actually, let's compare. So we eFuture has Alice in Wonderland, and we'll take the um, older story of Alice in Wonderland and kind of compare it just to give you a visualization, to visualize, to see how different um, the story is for a graded reader. So this here, this big text, this is the first page of the original story of Alice in Wonderland. So it's very long, and there's a lot of sentences, a lot of grammar, a lot of different structures that the students would have to learn. Um, I went through this, uh, like I talked about the technique of looking through a text and kind of highlighting some words that you would have to teach to the students that are maybe they don't know. So yeah, taking this original one here, uh, just reading the first sentence, um, I highlighted the word bank. So this isn't the bank that you would go and get money from in this story. So it's a different bank. So this is the bank of you know a river, something, a body of water, the bank of it. So these are kind of the words that I would kind of have to pre-teach to my students if I wanted them to kind of effectively learn and read this book and understand what they're reading. So things like daisy chain um, or even just... Uh, phrases that aren't um, used as often that they might not know. So things like pop down. Pop down, they might not know what pop down means. Maybe individually, they'll know what pop and down means, but together, they'll have a different meaning. So, so this is the original text. And then if we look at the first pages of a graded reader, this is the difference. So the three pages equal this page of text telling the same story. So you can see how, how much easier the language is, how much less vocabulary would that would need to be pre-taught, and just overall how much easier it is to teach to the younger students or to uh, beginning English learners, so through graded reading. So for a definition here, the graded readers are books that are written for language learners at a particular level, and they're simplified through their vocabulary and grammar. Okay. So how can we utilize the graded readers in classrooms? So I'm going to kind of go over the reading process and then go over the kind of strategy of extensive and intensive reading. So the reading process, so there's three main steps, the before reading, during reading, and after reading. So kind of going through the before reading, like I talked about, uh, with background knowledge, um, picture walk. I saw someone in chat talk about the picture walk. Those are good warm-ups to the story. Okay? These are good warm-ups to the story. Because you in the before reading, you want to kind of set the, the setting for your students. Set them up to become a part of the story or be into the story. So And then we go into the during reading. So during reading is actually, of course, reading the story, listening to the story, and then a little bit of understanding the story as well. Uh, more of the understanding can come afterwards, but you can also give during reading tasks to your students to do. Okay? So if we're going to take a graded reader here, the story called The Wolf and the Seven Children. So providing the background knowledge and building the background knowledge, warming up the students, so you can first just show the cover, ask them what's you know what they see, kind of make predictions, 
um, let them know, you know, the introduction of the story, what the story is about, and then um, kind of pull things, ask them questions that um, maybe that they already have, like experience or knowledge of the particular subject. So <clears throat> this story is about listening to your mother and being safe. So obviously you can ask the question, do you listen to your mom all the time? Okay. What are some things that you can do to be safe? And you know, you can give certain situations to be safe. Um, there's also some uh, some worksheets and uh, activities as well. So the focus on being of uh, thinking of your mother. So this worksheet here for before reading, um, just draw your mother, and then you can kind of talk about talk about their mom depending on you know the level of the students. And then the during reading, um, like I talked about giving tasks. So just talking about who is which character in the story and who is saying what in the story. Uh, or for example, with phonics, the phonics stories, um, for the vocabulary, you can highlight one word and ask the students to point, okay? So earlier we had Dan and the Ram. So you can highlight the word Ram and ask the students, where is the Ram? point to the ramp. So you can do kind of during reading tasks as well. Okay. So also remember with the fluency, so we're taking this text, you can still apply these strategies for this text as well. Okay. And then for after reading, um, the students can kind of have a book report, uh, see their understandings. Um, so in the summary that they kind of understand the vocabulary, Kind of see, and then um, yeah, at the end, also seeing what words words they learned. So it's kind of also important to have the students think about what they're learning. So it's also yeah, it's a good way for them to be more conscious about what they're learning. Okay, what's new to them, All right? Okay. So now extensive and intensive reading. So these are kind of some important things um, when it comes to learning to read and kind of continuing um, your progression your yeah progression into reading okay. so there are two strategies so we have intensive and extensive reading so what are they okay. does the chat know any idea so here I'll, I'll pose this question here any idea what is intensive and extensive reading so I'll start with intensive let's do with intensive first do you have any idea what is intensive reading Don't worry, I will go over the answers as well. So I just want to see what you guys think. Intensive reading. Or if you want to start with extensive, you can extensive reading as well. Reading in the class or guided by the teacher. Okay, very good. Bell? Anything else? So we're talking about intensive and extensive reading. A close reading, okay. Yes. <laughs> intensive reading, pay attention on words, sentence, and pictures. Okay, that's good. Get some details for intensive reading. Literature anthology, woo, very good. Some good ones. Okay, how about some extensive? Extensive reading. So intensive can read carefully. Okay. How about extensive? Extensive reading. Students understand the meaning of book by teacher. It's like reading purpose. Okay, good. Scan and skim. Okay. Sense of readings at home or after class by students again to read to gain more vocab. To read for fun. Okay, very good. Teachers are good. I would give you all an A for intensive and extensive reading. <laughs> so intensive reading, let's go in. So intensive reading happens in class, class time. And it's important that the teacher chooses. It's, it's a teacher's choice for the reading. It's about once or twice a week and you can involve the entire reading process. Focuses on four skills and then the teacher facilitates, is facilitating the reading. And the focus is on the language. 
Yeah. So you're focusing on learning the language in intensive reading. <clears throat> so extensive reading, it's on student time. The students choose. Okay. So hopefully with extensive reading, they're doing very frequent and every day. And it's just focusing on fluency and enjoyment. Okay. So they're kind of just reading as a, a, their own reward. And the teacher is more hands-off. Okay. So the teacher just kind of monitors the students. So you just, yeah, the teacher doesn't have to do really anything. So the students are just reading for the story. So intensive reading, they're, they're learning for the language or reading for the language in extensive reading for the story. Okay. So some examples like intensive reading. So we have things like, you know, my best reading. So you take these in as intensive. So they're reading with a purpose. So they're learning the vocabulary and doing all that. So they're taking this text and learning it this way. So once they read this, they'll have the task of the comprehension check of answering these questions and doing the rest of the, um, the exercises and practices. So this would be the intensive reading. Well, the extensive reading is taking like our comics, taking like a comic book, comic readers. Um, so kind of reading more for reading more for enjoyment, um, kind of enjoying the story and the illustrations. Um, we still do have the reading process in in some of the comics, but they're not the focus. They're there for kind of aiding the students in reading and enjoyment. So the focus is more on the story, like we uh, discussed. Okay. So like I talked about, the reading process is still there. So you still they still will get the pre-reading. They'll get introduced to the characters and then read the story. And if they want, there's extra activities at the end. But this is all the focus on enjoyment. Okay. So that's intensive and extensive reading. All right. All right. So now some activities. So I did talk about talked about the big five of reading instruction, and I talked about different strategies. So I'm going to ask you chat now, do you remember, do you remember any of the uh, fluency strategies that I had talked about earlier? Okay. So there was different fluency strategies that I had that point, bullet point list. Was there any strategies that you can remember that I uh, presented to you guys before I get into these activities? Let's see how many uh, how many teachers here will keep their A from the intensive and extensive reading. Oh, we got shared reading, good. Choral and paired reading, good. I think I had about seven, seven or eight, I think. I'm practicing the language. Timed reading, good, Chris. Well, popcorn reading, that was a... That was an activity. Good. Someone remembers the popcorn reading. Timed, repeated. Good. There's one that I'm trying to see. So choral, good, shared. So there's one more that I haven't seen yet. Play a role to reading. Good. So the role, reader's theater. Good. That's what I was waiting for. So reader's, reader's theater. Very good. Um, okay. So we have a question here. If students cannot understand the question you asked in English, do we need to translate? Uh, it depends. For me as a teacher, it would depend on uh, how much time you think it would take to explain it in English. So if you think that it would take a long explanation, I would say um, just for the limited class time, I would say just translate it for the students. But also be sure to ask the question again in English. Okay. So. Okay, so very good. And yeah, so very good. I think we got all of them. So role play, readers, theater. It's very good. You guys are great. Very happy. Okay, so let's get into some reading activities. Okay, so some of these activities I can play with you. So here we have speed reading. So this one goes into the timed reading. Timed reading. Okay, so this is a timed reading strategy. So this focuses on fluency, like I talked about. You don't want to put 
um, the students to focus on comprehension, just practice. Um, and with this, try to avoid follow-up activities. You just, this is just an activity by itself, standalone. So you kind of take a text and then kind of have the students read and see how long, either how long it takes them to read the text or how many words they can read in the time. Okay, so I want to do this with chat. Uh, we still have some time left, so I want to do this activity with you. I cannot see you practicing it, so I'm going to trust you that you're going to only do this activity in the time I give. Okay, so I'm going to give you 20 seconds. So here's your text. So I'm going to give you 20 seconds, timer. I want you to try to read as many words as you can. Okay. And then after the 20 seconds, um, I gave you a little bit of help. And so the, the numbers at the end of each here is how many words total in that section. Okay? How many total in that section? So I'm going to time you, give you a 20 second timer. So this bar here, when this part tur all turns to red, the 20 seconds is up. Okay? So I want you to try to read as many words as you can in 20 seconds. All right? So on go, I want you to start, okay? So in three, two, one, start. Okay, so you have 20 seconds. Try to read as many words as you can. And I trust that you'll only use the 20 seconds. Oh, we're getting close to being finished. And stop, okay. So can you try to count how many words and write into chat how many words did you write or did you read? Curious to see if anyone has, I believe the total altogether is 71. I think 71 words is the total. Let me do some quick math here. 58, 49. Yeah, yeah, 71 would be total. All of it. Oh, some really strong readers. 58, 57. 60. Oh, that's still good. Yeah, total, total. You can count. Okay, we have some people all. 71, perfect. Great. Yeah, so there's different variations you can do with this, like I said. So you can do this timed version, and the students try to read. It's also important that uh, when you do this game, that the teacher or the students kind of... Um, police each other and you don't want to count words that the students aren't reading properly so we also want to work on that because so if you're reading too fast and maybe you can't understand it i think that the words shouldn't count so they should actually make sure that they are actually practicing um, speaking the language rather than you know the speed trying to put the focus on their speaking and properly okay so you can do it that way speed or just time them how long does it take you to read the full text okay? so you can do a different variations of this activity all right so yeah the speed activity giving your partner so yeah how many words you read and record your results so you can do different trials and see uh, if you give them different uh, or give them chances to do it multiple times, they can eventually see their, uh, oh yeah, you, they can read out loud. So you can, this uh, worksheet here, so you could print it out and then give one, one paper per pair or per group, and then um, they have them read it out loud. And then uh, the other students will time, either time them or um, kind of make sure that they're reading properly. Okay. And with doing multiple trials, um, the students can see their growth as well. So I've said trial one, the student had 50 words. And trial two, the student had 60 words. It kind of builds that motivation, like, oh, I can do this. It kind of builds that inside of them that they can uh, do the activities. Okay. So then another activity here is reading feelings. So this kind of incorporates the, you can do this across all of the strategies. Um, you can also do it with the uh, reader's theater. Okay, so it's kind of model reading. The students can identify the feelings in the story. 
and you kind of prepare feeling cards for the students to give to them. And once they get that feeling, um, the students can either guess, or if you do a reader's theater, if you do a reader's theater, then you can uh, have them act with that feeling. Uh, for the for this timed reading activity for the uh, speed reading, um, it's not it's more focusing on fluency. So the understanding of the text that would come at a different time, so a different uh, thing. So the timed reading is just focusing on fluency. Okay. So then with for reading feelings, so the class guesses and then you can final up follow up with tone and meaning. So like here we had the princess and the pea. So there's different uh, different roles that the students can play, and then you can prepare different uh, feelings for the students. So maybe you can take all these cards, put it in a bag, and when the students get the roles, they can pick out of the bag, and they have to read the, their role in these different kinds of ways. So it kind of adds a little bit more fun to reading as well, for reading feelings. Yeah, unfortunately, we're not all together in the same room, so we won't be able to really practice this activity together. But uh, this is kind of the idea that you could uh, do with your students. Okay. So, and then how can you adapt this for group work or for different levels? Obviously, for different levels, maybe if they don't understand the different feelings, you can have them do it, you know, kind of simpler, happy, angry, sad kind of feelings. And then kind of the third activity I'm going to present to you guys, kind of run in short here, is a kind of TPR. And we know what TPR is total physical response. So it's taking the sentences from the text or target. So this is a TPR reading. So take the sentences, and then we're going to present symbols to the students. And each symbol will have a movement part of them. And when the students read, the students have to do the movement if it um, shows up. So an example of this, so we'll take this um, again, the weather from my, uh, I believe this is my next reading or best reading, okay? So we'll take the weather sentences here and then we'll put the sentences here on the slide here, okay? So we have different symbols. So circle will be clap, triangle will be jump and square will be spin. Okay, so you'll take these sentences and then for the first round, you'll have the students just read, practice reading the sentences. And then slowly as you go through different rounds, you can make it a bit more difficult. So then for the second round, you would throw in these symbols for the students to do while they read. So it's giving them a sort of challenge. So it's hi and then how you'd clap. How is the weather there? It's rainy, and then they would jump today. So this would be round two. So giving a bit of a challenge. And then you can go round three. You kind of give them a little bit more challenge and give them two actions at the same time. And then, and then go another round and see if they can do all three with one word. So this kind of just develops, again, more fluency practice. It's not as much comprehension. So just getting them to practice reading while you know having fun. And a lot of times, especially with TPR activities, it's so easy to have the students sit down and read the text all the time. So it kind of gets them to focus in a little bit more when you can um, incorporate a little bit of different strategies in the classroom this way. Okay. So is there any questions on this activity? Sounds good. Okay, so this was so this was the final activity <clears throat> that I had for you guys today. So I'm leaving a little bit of time. Um, oh, first I have a final thought. Sorry. So with reading, so this is the reading cycle that I want to present to you guys. So this is our goal, especially for extensive reading. Okay. So we start with the student begins to read a story. So that's either through intensive or extensive reading. So we give them a text to read. And hopefully we give them a story that they're interested in. Yeah, give them a story that they're interested in. And once they're drawn into the story, we try to get the students to understand the content. 
Okay? And once the students understand the content are able to read, they start to be more comfortable and confident readers. And then once they get that, once they have that confidence, that motivation, it kind of builds that positive association. Because a lot of times when you know things get too difficult, it's easy to get negative. So when the students build that positive association with reading and that extensive reading, then the cycle goes back to the beginning and they will pick up, say, the next, the next uh, issue of the next comic. So they read comic one. Now they read, understood, feel confident, happy with the story, very interested. Then they can start reading comic number two and then keep going with the cycle. And once we start this at an early age, you know, once they get older, they'll be more confident readers and they'll read, you know, by themselves and more confidently. So this is kind of what, what we essentially want to promote with everything from the big five down to all this practice in class. This is kind of the goal that we want to set for our students to be happy with reading. You know, of course, there's going to be some students that don't like reading, but eventually, you know, with reading in English, this is kind of the cycle that we want to promote to them and to, for them to be able to do either in class or by themselves. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, that's kind of uh, my presentation for today. So we do have a survey that uh, we'd like for you guys to fill out. So we have this QR code here. Um, the QR code on the right is our WeChat. So please follow us on WeChat, get up to date news and uh Everything that, you know, when we'll hopefully be again visiting China in the future and hopefully meet some of you guys in, in person and give you this kind of seminar in person with some more activities. Uh, and below is my uh, email. So feel free to email me with any questions or um, not 100% sure whether ELT Max will have our uh, presentation to give to you. Um, if that doesn't come out soon, then please email me and I can get that to you as well. And we do have a little bit of time left, so if there's any questions, I'm still here right now, so you can ask your questions now as well, and I'll answer them as best as I can for you. So thank you very much, and uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and hope you all are safe where you are at home. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks for the flowers. <laughs> <laughs>